In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this walking animation that you are seeing on screen right now. Okay, so let's start from scratch. I'm going to create a new fusion composition and we can just rename this whatever. Now I'm going to bring this into our timeline. Now I am basing these off of an After Effects tutorial and the process is sort of similar, but it's a little bit different because in DaVinci there's no rigging, although somebody on Reddit recommended me a script or plugin called FooGraph or something like that, but I haven't been able to figure out how to make it work yet. So if I do, I am going to make another tutorial updating on that specifically. So I have this screenshot right here, which is by from the After Effects video that's by Ben Marriott, who is an awesome motion graphics artist. Uh, I think he's based in Australia. So that is the video I use as an inspiration for these because he explains really well how to actually make these look a little bit more realistic, right? So we have this little shape, which is the important part. So let me just change that view here. And I'm going to press Ctrl G to bring our guide lines here so that we can see them. So you basically want the feet to follow these points. So each of these points could be one or two keyframes. I think in the video that he did, he, it was like two keyframes. So we're going to do two keyframes for this video too. Now, the first thing then we're going to do is we're going to add a background, not right there. We're going to add a background and we're going to make these invisible. And then we're going to bring these right there. Actually, we're not going to make that invisible. We're going to add the polygon and we're going to create this sort of shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Now we're going to take the solid out and we're going to make these align like that. And this is a rough guide, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So you can take as much time as you want to make this little guide like that. OK, that's good enough. And then here we're going to press Ctrl and Spacebar and we're going to add a paint node so that we can add the little dots that we have here. Now, if we just press that, it doesn't look that well. So we're going to go to the brush controls and we're going to press this solid one and we're going to actually change the color and it can be green, red, anything that sort of like adds a little bit more of contrast. And after that, we're going to change the stroke duration to, let's say, 30 because we're not going to animate to that many keyframes. We can make this a little bit bigger and after that, we're going to add these total of I think it's going to be 11. So one, two, three, 12. I guess I was off by one, but that's OK. OK, after we have that, we can get rid of that image that we have here. And we now have our guide that we're going to use for our leg, basically. A quick interruption. I just wanted to mention that if you're looking for assets for DaVinci Resolve, I have a bunch of them on my website and also they most of them have a free trial. So you can download the demo of them to try them out. And if you like them, then you can purchase them. So yeah, let's continue with the video. So the first thing that we're going to do for the leg is we're going to add a background note. And these are not going to be great illustrations. This is just to understand the concept because you will have to add a lot more details to be able to make these work like it is in After Effects with the rigged uh, character, of course. So they're going to look pretty rough, I would say, sort of like the example that you already saw. So here we can change the color of these. And before we draw anything, we have to move these and connect this there. And then we're going to try to start this from the middle. And it's going to be two points. Beginning point is going to be right in the middle. Then we're going to have the knee. And the last one is going to be the lower part of the leg. After that, we can move this a little bit like that. OK, now that we have that, we can increase the border width a little bit so we can see these. And if you want, you can make these a flat one like that or just round it. It's up to you because later on, we're going to connect the foot or the feet that we're going to have here. OK, now one thing you need to do is that we cannot really animate because we're going to use the transform node to connect these to this point right here. So we want to basically publish those points for that we can hold control and make sure that the middle one is also selected and we're going to right click go here to the polyline or polygon 2 and we're going to publish these points right here now if you check this out you will see that this moves and that is what we're going to use to animate so we're going to create a keyframe for all of these and also the top one here now, it's important that you do this because otherwise, when you're connecting other stuff, 
for some reason it freaks out and it doesn't want to work so it gets a little bit bugged out now we are going to use this shortcut that it took me i don't know how many years i've been working on fusion to discover which is these i guess call it ear handles on your keyboard i'm gonna put a picture right here so you can see it and we're gonna use that to move our legs one thing i forgot is i want to add a second paint or actually we can just add a second line which is gonna be the polygon for the knees we want the knees to sort of stay in a little bit of like around that same range we don't want them to go too much above or too much below these that way it's gonna look a little bit more natural it's not gonna look like the leg is going all over because that's one of the key mistakes is that the leg suddenly becomes a lot bigger and that is because of the distance between the knee and the feet that happens when you're moving these around so we're gonna try to keep these under around this area the knee okay after we have that we can start animating the leg that we have here we're gonna start these at this point and that doesn't look like a natural knee right so we're gonna start these with the leg like that a little bit and then we're gonna go two frames forward we're gonna bring these around closer to the second point always trying to move these a little bit and this is just a time consuming process right so now i think our shape here is a little bit bigger for what we have in in like you can see here already the leg become a lot bigger so that is not a problem all you have to do is actually just follow that idea so that is sort of like a guideline you can make these small it doesn't have to be exactly that same size it all depends on what the character or the the illustration is gonna look like right so at the end you will notice that both of them will look sort of similar if you have followed the path correctly you can see here it moves around like that and here the same thing happens right and one more here bringing the knee a little bit closer and since we are going two frames by two frames then we're gonna have uh 12 right here right so the ending would be at the frame 24 which is gonna be there closer to oops closer to the beginning again now if we look at these we can see the legs are becoming shorter but for the tutorial sake i'm gonna leave these like that i'm not gonna play too much otherwise because i played around with these for like a couple of hours to figure out right so it's not something that will just be able to just do it the first time it requires practice and as you make these more you will definitely get better at doing this type of motion and you will be able to see it more clearly obviously okay after we have that the next thing would be if we want this to be a walking animation of course then we're gonna have to loop these and for that i'm gonna press ctrl a to select everything and then we simply go to set loop and now this will continue forever okay now after we have that we can you can get rid of the second part or like the graph that we have here and this is not perfect by any means as i mentioned but this is just so that we can understand the concept after that we want to add our foot now for your foot or your the feet uh, i use an example an ellipse and i just made it a little bit flat but this is up to you if you want more details you can use a polygon and actually draw the foot like Sort of like a real shoe right but in this case I'm just gonna make this like that on these ellipse we need a background for these so we're gonna connect these there and we're gonna go and connect these to the previous background that we have now don't move these like that because we're gonna add a transform node which is what's gonna be connected to the foot right here so what we want here is we're gonna add the transform so press ctrl and space bar for that and we're gonna move the ellipse so that the edge or this area which is gonna be connected to the leg right here it's a little bit more to this side so the pivot point should be like right here so the pivot point of the transform node as you can see it right here okay now we can go and connect these to here to this section so how do we do this for that we're gonna keep these selected and press ctrl go to the polygon and now you can see the polygon points right here and if you don't remember which one was which one usually the zero will be the first one that you put then this one's going to be one and then this is going to be two so we want these transform to be at the bottom part so we're going to go to the transform right here and here and center we're going to go to expression 
is going to allow us to connect these to the polygon point number two. And now we have our foot there. Now, the good thing of using a transform node is that then you can actually make adjustments to the foot right here and moving this won't affect the, the basically the connection so that the foot is still going to go where the leg is going. OK, now the other part, the other part that we have to take into account is if you want to connect these again just for a little bit, is that what I did? was I actually animated the foot a little bit with the transform node. So if we select this transform node, we can see the pivot point is right here. That means that if we move these, the rotation, that's going to move from that point. So it's basically sort of like how a foot moves, right? So we're going to create a keyframe for the angle and we're going to go to frames and just adjust a little tweak, little adjustments so that it looks a little bit more like a normal foot it's moving right and then 24 so if we look at these it moves a little bit it's obviously not perfect <laughs> I, I keep saying that i don't know why but it's okay after that we're gonna set these and as a loop again so that it is repeated so okay now something happened and the loop deactivated that's why it stayed like that and that happens a lot of times you forget you think you did something, but then it got deactivated. OK, but because I misclicked, click reverse. So to set the loop is right next button. OK. OK, we have that there. Now, another thing that I did was I actually animated the the ellipse to become a little bit smaller like that when it was on the floor. But in this case, I'm not going to show you that. But all you would do for that is like when it's on the floor, you would create another key from right here, let's say, and then make these uh, a little bit flatter like that it will work better if you do have a polygon that you can actually adjust it's just a lot more work because you will have to adjust these every two keyframes right like in the previous one okay so after we have that in the example that i show you at the beginning we have the other leg so we don't want to have to create this whole thing from zero because if something happens you want to change you want this to be applied to both legs right so for that, we're going to use a duplicate node. You can use a time node also. A similar effect happens, but both of them would get a little bit bugged out. Sometimes like they, for some reason, the polygon would just get cut. Sort of like if there was a mask, it was a weird bug, right? So I'm not sure why that happened. OK, now here we have the time offset. How does that work is that if we go down the copy, it's going to be happening five frames after the first one. So if we go to frame five, we're going to see that second one. If we press positive number, then it's going to start with five frames forward. So this is the second copy. It's going to start five frames ahead. Now we have 24 frames, so we want these to be completely parallel. So we're going to divide this by two and we're going to make these minus 12. And now we have that walking animation. It sort of looks like a cartoon walking animation. Now, the next part that we had here was a little head or eye. I was actually trying to make a collage and add this cat's head, but I just didn't have the patience anymore. And I think it was getting too late when I was working on that. So I just went to sleep that time that night and I just didn't continue on. OK, to make that body, we're going to use a similar concept and we're going to make these like that smaller. Gonna then connect these there. Keeping that in the middle, we're going to add a transform node and we're going to connect this transform node if you want, you can connect the transform node to the top part of the polygon. But since this is not moving that much, then it doesn't make sense to do that. We're going to have to manually animate these right now. If you do want to add a body, then you can do that, too. It's just up to you. But in this case, we have this head right here. So we're going to try to follow the motion of the knees. So when one of the knees is down or closer to the ground, we're going to bring the body a little bit closer to the ground and we're going to try to loop these to see if that works too. So we're going to start at 12. I'm going to go a couple of frames. Bring this a little bit lower. Then a little bit higher. There we have that. I think that works. Woo, I think we just nailed it. Great. And now we're going to loop this. And now this is the, the true point. Now, now we're going to see if it actually works. Ah, it's a little bit too fast. It looks weird. So we're going to have to make this a little bit slower. 
So we're going to actually just use two points and we're going to make these go all the way to 24. And then we're going to loop these. Yeah, that doesn't work. So we're going to actually ping pong these. It might be better if it's a little bit faster, but for the tutorial sake, it's okay. Now, if you saw the example that we had, the body or the head or eye, whatever it was, had a different like actual eyeball inside it, right? Now to create that sort of eye that we had, uh, what I did was I added another background node and on this background node, we're gonna use the gradient. But before that, we're gonna go and add a second ellipse here. We're gonna disconnect these, but we're gonna connect these here again. And on this second one, we're gonna go to subtract. And then we're gonna make these smaller like that and we're gonna put it in place. Now we're gonna go to the background and we're gonna connect the background here as a merge node. Now this needs to be inverted, so we're gonna press invert right here. And now we can go and bring these here. Okay, it looks a little bit too big. It's up to you really. And here on this background, we can see that we can see these handles right here. And we're going to move these like that. And we're going to change the gradient type from linear to radial. That's going to give us a black part of the eye. In order to get rid of that soft spot right here, we're just going to bring this black color closer to the white one. And then we have our eye here. Now, if you do want to animate this section, all you have to do is animate the start or the ending point if you want, but that's just going to make it bigger like that. I didn't do that. I just realized that right now, but that is how you would animate this if you want to make it have expressions or make this be, be like bigger and stuff like that. And if you want this to move or to animate like in the video, what I did was I actually just made these section like that. So I just made it squint a little bit every now and then. Okay, and then if we press play right here, we can have our little guy right here walking. Now to make the background scene, all I did was just add random shapes. For that, we're gonna add a road. And this is to be a different color, but if you want, you can actually just add like a gradient again and make this vertical like that and add a second point. And in this one, we're gonna make these say yellow now it doesn't add too much contrast blue and we're gonna bring the white closer to the gray area can i get rid of that point and we're gonna have these sort of walking on water i guess if you want this to be sharper then we're just gonna do that and i also had a I also had these mountain ridges that were looping in the background, right? So for that, actually what I did was in this second point, I think what I had was I had zero on these, so that it's transparent. And then behind these, we can add a the shapes that we had for the mountains. For that, we're just gonna add a second background node. I'm gonna connect these here. And this is in the foreground right now. We want that to be in the background. So we're gonna press Control T and on these, here we can actually change the color so if you want the mountains to be green i guess no that doesn't add the contrast a little bit bad there it's gonna be colorful so it's gonna have sort of like pink okay now we have these and to add the mountains where well, i just drew random shapes like that and then i close these now we have the mountains if you want all of them to be sort of rounded what i did is press shift s or smooth them out and now you have this sort of shape like that actually for the background what i did was because there's a little bit of a waviness that happens right so you can actually just keep this as a solid if you want and we're gonna make these uh the same bluish color and we're gonna add a polygon to these and you can see the background that we have here of the mountains okay and now we're going to take into account when the last keyframe is going to be here because if you want it to loop perfectly, you're going to have to go back to the ending point right here so that we're going to have to go 12 frames right when the first one appears. So the easiest way to actually realize when the ending point should be 
would be go here to the loop and select both of the things that you have looping right now, which are these two. And we're going to check the graphs that we have here. So we can see that the animation ends right or starts to loop again almost perfectly at 120. I think it starts perfectly at 120, so we don't have to change this here. Now, if you had a few more keyframes or less keyframes, then you would have to make this a little bit longer or later on cut this on your edit page. So now that we have these, we can actually make the background like this a little bit wavy. And since it's going to start at the frame, we're going to remove these first of all. We're going to start at frame 12 here and we're going to add a little bit of a curve. If we want this background to also have that waviness animation, we need to find the halfway point between 12 and 120, which is actually 120 minus 12, which is 108. So that is the amount that we need to loop. And there'll be 54. So we have 108 keyframes right here total. And we need to go from 12 plus 54. That is 66. Okay. Now here we can add the second movement that we have right here and we're going to change the handles poof, around, move them around a little bit. And after that, we can set these to ping pong. That way it's going to sort of repeat like that. OK, we have that. And then the last point would be to move our background mountains. And for that, we're going to add a transform node here. And we're going to set the edges from canvas to wrap. That way, if we move these to the side, they're going to be repeated. Now, you have to be careful when you do these because you don't want that second or you don't want these to happen right here. So we're going to have to change this a little bit and we're going to remove the polygon animation so that it doesn't move. So it doesn't happen again. OK, because if you as you saw, as you saw it, it was cut right there. OK, now we can actually follow the same process that we did for the background moving here, depending on how fast you want it to look. But I think if we just go one time all the way to like 120, let's look at how that looks. So it's going to be minus 0.5. Let's check this out. I think that works perfectly. Well, except for that section where there's only one leg. But yeah, you get what I'm saying, right? So on the edit page, we'll actually what you would render out will be from that point right here at frame 12. So in order to see it better, we're just going to go right at 36 and find 36, 12. Perfect. OK, now we have that second background there. Because it starts at 12. And if you want, you can cut these at 12, but it's not necessary. You can do that. You can do that when you're rendering it, right? OK, so if we want to add uh, the color for the actual background, then you can now go here and make these the color that you want. And this is obviously up to you. It's just a creative exercise so that you're able to work around Fusion and to create some interesting stuff. Now, I also added a drop shadow here to the legs. And of course, it doesn't look good here. So we're going to make these closer to the legs a little bit and also decrease the blur like that. OK, and now we have our animation. If you want, you can actually just make a copy of these and press Control Shift V to create an instance. And now the head also has that little drop shadow. And yeah, so that is basically how the, I did that walking animation. So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Once again, I'll see you in the next video here in Swabby. Bye.